By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome to round number five right here at Paladins of the North 22. We are just continuing with our video report of this great, beautiful tournament. And today we're going to look at Aland taking on Wilfred Aland, a player from Sweden. He's playing with a line dip deck that I've called Serendip Lightning. Why? Because he's added Chain Lightnings and Lightning Bolts to his list and two very brave Iron Claw Orcs. And I just love the Iron Claw Orc because they're just smelly. They remind me of this, you know, Sunday morning feeling after you've had a couple of too many pints, you know, that kind of feeling. So anyway, um, <laughs> that's me about Iron Claw Orcs. I'm not going to bother you with that. Um, and then he is playing against Wilfred, and Wilfred is bring, bringing a deck to the table that I've called Meet the Flargies. It's mainly red. It's got a little bit of a modest blue splash in the form of Ancestral Recall and Time Walk. And the cool thing here is that he's playing with two Goblins of the Flarg. I think that's pretty, pretty sweet. Both of these decks are doing quite well in this tournament, so I'm really curious to see who's going to win uh, this battle. Now, before I jump into the deck text, I would just like to point out that if you want to skip that section or if you want to skip this section, the best thing, uh, the best way to do that actually is by checking the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the game action. And as for here, we are going to continue with the deck text. I'm going to start with the deck of Aland Serendip Lightning. And here we see the deck of Aland, and man, what a cool deck it is. So first off, um, it's, it's Line Dip, right? Line Dip is super, super popular. Line Dip basically means you're playing with Surrender Befreed, you're playing with Savannah Lines, and then you're playing, you know, with Counter Magic, the four Counter Spells, you're playing with Swords of Plowshares, Disenchant, all that stuff. Now, when we zoom into this deck, we actually see that it's different than your traditional line dip deck. There are some different changes uh, changes that are made here. First off, he's playing with two creatures that you usually don't see in these decks and that's Iron Claw Orc. Iron Claw Orc, one red and one for a 2-2 creature. That's horrible at blocking, but it's not going to block in this deck anyway. It's just going to attack. And what I like about it is it means he's got a one drop creature, a two drop creature, and a three drop creature. And then somewhere, you know, at the end, uh, of his list, we do see one Sarah Angel there that's, of course, a five drop. But, you know, I kind of like the inclusion of Iron Claw Orc. I'm really curious to see how it will perform. I, th I think in this matchup, maybe not that well, but yeah, I'm just, I'm curious about it. Um, another thing we see here is, of course, the inclusion of four Lightning Bolts and four Chain Lightning. So it's really heavy on direct damage. And that's, of course, a reason why I've called this deck Surrendip Lightning, because he's just not playing with only blue and white. He's also added red to the mix. And that makes it very much more direct damage focused and very much more an aggro deck than the other line dip versions. The other line dip versions, you could say, are aggro control, where this is really, for me, when I look at it, it's really purely an aggro brew, right? We also see three psionic blasts. Of course, those psionic blasts are really going to help making the lightning bolts and chain lightnings even better because you've simply got more direct damage. You know, what this deck wants to do in a nutshell is play out Savannah Lines, Surrender Befreed, Iron Claw Orcs really, really early, probably using the Moxin to, to accelerate that, to get them out early, make some combat damage, maybe deal, I don't know, eight points of combat damage that your opponent's on 12 or 10 or whatever, and finish your rest with your direct damage. There's a lot of direct damage in this deck. I mean, four lightning bolts and four chain lightnings that is 24 damage alone. And then you also have 12 damage that you can deal with the Psionic Blast. So that's a lot of damage. And also looking at this list, he's not playing with Swords to Plowshares. So he is not planning on giving his opponent any life at all. He just wants to race with this deck and he just wants to get to the finish as quickly as possible. Also, it's nice to note here that cards like Time Twister, Brain Geyser, and Wheel of Fortune are gonna help him because they enable him Ancestral Recall as well, by the way. They enable him to find the direct damage when he's kind of running out of cards in hand and he needs to do, I don't know, six more points of damage. He can use these cards to quickly draw into them. So I think this is just a really, really good uh, good deck. Uh, and I, I think this is the type of deck that you expect to make it to a top eight at this kind of tournament. If it will, we'll just have to wait and see. I think both decks here in round five are doing really well. Alan's deck, of course, but also the deck of Wilfred that we're going to look at in a moment. So um, yeah, this this is the deck of Ireland. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments below. Is this better in your view than the traditional line dip deck? I would love to hear from you. Um, and now let's go to the deck of his opponent, Wilfred. 
the Flargies. And here we see the deck of Wilfred meet the Flargies. And of course, I've named it after those two Goblins of the Flarks in here because I just think it's so cool to see somebody playing two Goblins of the Flark main. And I also really like the combination Blood Moon and Goblins of the Flark. Um, Blood Moon turns all the non-basic lands into mountains. And then, of course, your creatures with Mountain Walk are just unblockable and you can just deal damage with them. So there's a really nice combination with Goblins of the Flark. What I also like is the synergy between Blood Moon and Ball Lightning. As you can see, there are three Ball Lightnings in the deck of Wilfred. That's a 6-1 Trampler with Haste. And a big problem for Ball Lightning right now is Maze of If, right? Maze of If is unrestricted in Swedish. So a lot of people started playing multiple Mazes of Ifs in their deck, making Ball Lightning pretty bad. But when you've got Blood Moon, Blood Moon turns the Maze of If into a mountain, so it no longer functions and it makes your Ball Lightning better. So if you play Ball Lightning, I would always play uh, Blood Moon right next to it. This is just my personal opinion. Um, looking at the rest of the creature base, by the way, I really like the four Suchis main board. I think Suchi, of course, is aggressive. You've got no mana burn in Swedish, so you don't have to worry about that. And the nice thing is it works against the Abyss. You know, the Abyss is a problem for Wilfred. He's got very little weapons against enchantments. He just needs to use his Chaos Orb to get rid of an enchantment. So in that case, you know, when your opponent casts... Um, uh, you know, casts a, uh, an Abyss, it's really good to have those four Suchis there. In the sideboard, we do see some weapons against the Abyss, by the way. We see two Avens. He can put those in for two other Flyers. We also see two Nevenor's Discs. So he did think about what am I going to do when I uh, play against an Abyss deck. Um, then we're seeing those Flying Forces. I love to see two big Sheevan Dragons in the deck. Really looking forward to see them in action. I also like the inclusion of the three Dragon Whelps. Dragon Whelp if it stays on the board, it can just be really, really good. You know, you can pump it to five, you can deal damage. Another cool thing about it is to remember when you pay more than three red into your Dragon Whelp, it destroys itself at the end of the turn, which may sound as something bad, but it's actually good if you play in a format like ours where there's a lot of control magics around. So you've got some kind of built-in self-protect for control magic. Your opponent wants to steal your Dragon Whelp. You just pump four red into it, it, it destroys itself. And then you're basically trading a Dragon Whelp for control magic which is not that bad. Now, obviously, you do need to have enough red mana open to pay that cost. I also think in this matchup, the Dragon Whelp is not going to be great because Island is playing with four Chain Lightnings and four Lightning Bolts. And of course, uh, Dragon Whelp has a toughness of three. But we'll just have to wait and see. And talking about specifically the matchup, we do see one City in a Bottle in this deck. I think the City in a Bottle can be really, really good because Island is playing with a full playset of Surrendips. We also see another CD in a bottle in the sideboard of Wilfred, so I'm pretty sure he's going to board that in after game one. Although, maybe he's worried that his opponent will board out the Surrendips. Anyway, we'll just have to see how it goes. Talking about that, we have now looked at the deck of Wilfred. We've looked at the deck of Aland. So, I guess we're ready. Let's start with round number five, Aland versus Wilfred. Let's go! Game number one of round number five at the Paladins of the North Cup between Aland, he's a player sitting on the right with the blue sleeves, and Wilfred, he's playing with the red sleeves, he's sitting on the left, already more reddish brown. Anyway, um, Wilfred is playing with an almost mono red deck with Bull Lightnings and Goblins of the Flark in them, so I'm really looking forward to see his deck in action. He's also playing with Shivan Dragons and Dragon Whelps. Um, and he's playing mono red, but he's also playing two blue cards in there. Those are the only other, that's the only other color that he's playing. And um, those two cards are, I think, Ancestral Recall and Time Walk. So they're really, really good. But those are the only other two uh, cards that are not red in his deck or artifacts. And uh, Aland is playing with white, blue, and red. He's playing with the deck that I've called Surrendip Lightning because he's playing with Surrendip Freed, Savannah Lines but also with Chain Lightnings and Lightning Bolts. So it's a pretty aggressive deck. And we see Aland here taking a Mulligan. Looking at his hand, is he going to keep this? That is the big question. Uh, we are playing with London Mulligan rules. That means that um, you draw a new seven cards after your first Mulligan. Then if you want to keep that hand, you're going to put one of those cards on the bottom and you keep six. Now he's taking a second Mulligan here, which is pretty extreme. That means he's going to draw seven cards again, but he needs to put two cards on the bottom of his library if he chooses to keep. So hopefully for Aland, uh, this is going to be an okay hand. He's already pretty far behind, I guess, having to mull twice. And uh, luckily for Wilfred, he's still got a beer while he waits for Aland to shuffle up. And both of these players can still make it to top eight, by the way. So these are two decks that are doing really well at this tournament. 
And of course, both players know this uh, about each other because this is uh, the first rounds or Swiss rounds. That means that you're gonna play against somebody who's kind of has the same results with the deck. So you know if your deck's doing really well, you're gonna play against a deck that's also doing really well. So that may trigger you to take a mulligan quicker perhaps because you're like, okay, I really need good cards to win against this deck. So there we see Alan again asking if Wilfred wants to uh, put the piles in order. But these players know each other really well, really friendly atmosphere here at this tournament. And uh, let's see if Alan is going to keep his hand now. He's going to draw a fresh seven. So remember, this is the second mulligan. I mean, he almost has to keep. Or else he's got to go down to four cards. That is uh, pretty brutal. So now he's got to put two cards on the bottom. And he's going to keep... It looks like he's not very happy about it, though. At least Wilfred's on the play, so he gets to draw to six cards. There is a mountain and a pass turn. So he's going to draw card number six. What is he going to do here? And there we see a plateau and just a pass. There is a little bit of chatting here. Wilfred checking the amount of cards. I mean, no turn one play, no goblins with the flock, unfortunately, from uh, Wilfred. There we do see a Mistress Factory. Is he going to play an Iron Claw Orcs, for example? Nope, no Iron Claw Orcs either. Passing turn here. There we see a Tundra and a pass. I do believe I saw a Serendip of Freed there in hand of Alon. So next turn he can play a Serendip. There we see a Plateau. Tapping three and, ooh, there's a Stone Rain. So he's playing with two Stone Rains and two Blood Moons, which is quite an interesting combination. There we see a Plateau and a Savannah Lines. And I think that Stone Rain was really good because it kind of slows Alan down. Of course, he wanted to play a Serendip and he also loses his only blue source. We do see a Savannah Line, but of course that Mishra's Factory is an easy blocker for the Savannah Lines because it can pump itself. Are we now, for example, going to see a Dragon Whelp, turn number four? Tapping two first. There we see a Bolt. And is that also then an activation? Yeah, an activation attacking for two. And there we see a Bolt on the Mistress Factory. So an interesting choice here to animate the Mistress Factory. There we see a Mistress Factory on the side here of Aland. So I guess that kind of maybe shows that Wilfred has enough lands in hand that he's willing to kind of, you know, put his land at risk there with that attack. There we see a Chaos Orb, but we don't see a land drop. Interesting. The way I usually play, and I'm not saying that's the way to do it, but oh, it looks like he's going to flip. No, he's not going to flip. He's just going to take the damage for a moment there. I thought it was going to flip. What I usually do is when I decide to attack with the factory, I always think, okay, I'm probably going to lose it to a Bolt or a Disenchant, especially playing against uh, the deck that Alan's playing with. And I'm just accepting that, so then I usually have enough lands in hand or already enough lands on the table. But Wilfred made another decision. He has found another land now, by the way. He's on four lands and that Chaos Orb. And he's just passing turn. So he's keeping the Chaos Orb. There we see another factory though. So there's going to be an attack and a possible pump. And now he is going to flip. He's like, okay, I've had enough. He's going to flip. Let's see if he hits. Another interesting flipping strategy here, by the way. Oh, yep, it's a hit. I I you flip in such a cool way, Wilfred. That's really funny. I haven't seen that, that you put your finger at the top. Wow. It's again, I, I think I've said it before in this video report, but what I really like about old school is just all the, the flipping of the orbs and that every player has a different technique. It's just really interesting to see. There we see a Sapphire and there's that Surrender Perfeet that he's been holding. I think it was in his opening hand already, but he just couldn't play it out because of that Stone Rain on the Tundra in, uh, in turn number two. There is a city in a bottle. Oh, that's such a good answer here. Just for two mana. And he kills the surrender, but also blocks any future surrenders. This must be really annoying here for Island. At least he still has the factory that he can attack with. And he's got a blue source with the Sapphire. So it's not all that bad. But now he needs to invest 
Perhaps a disenchant in CD in a bottle if he wants to play any more surrenders. There's a bolt. And now look at his land count. It's getting really, really thin here for Aland. There's the untap by Wilfred. And it's quite interesting, right, that Wilfred is playing all these dual lands, especially the plateaus, and he's not playing with any white sources. So he's just using this to confuse his opponent, probably. And tapping four. There we see a Dragon Whelp. Really cool to see a Dragon Whelp here. It's a creature that's perhaps a little bit underplayed in old school magic. Beautiful beta copy, I believe. There we see a Psyblast on the Dragon Whelp. So Aland here is going to take two from his own side blast, drop to 18. Both players still pretty high up, by the way. Both players still on 18. So this is in no means a fast game. And that's quite interesting because when I looked at the deck list, I thought, ooh, this could be a very quick game. But it is not. And just a pass here, we see a disintegrate in hand by Wilfred. That's one of the cards I can spot. Only three mana for Aland. There we see a Black Lotus. I mean, he's playing with one Sarah Angel. That's kind of the biggest creature he's got. Of course, Black Lotus is great. Oh, there we see the Sarah. I wanted to say Black Lotus is great with Brain Geyser. He's choosing it here to play the Sarah. Taking a bit of a risk, though. And I'm just expecting to see Wilfred here play that Disintegrate. Yeah, there we see that Disintegrate. And, uh, this is pretty bad. You know, every time Alan's playing a threat... Wilfred seems to have the perfect answer. And there we see a Soul Ring and a pass. So that Soul Ring's actually pretty good here for Island because he's, he's pretty low on land, so it's nice to have that. And there we see a Mox Ruby. And just a pass here from Island. So both players, of course, having a lot of answers in their deck. You know, the bolts, the side blasts, the disintegrates. There's the goblins of the flark. Oh, ho -ho! it's really happy to see it. Meet the flargies. Here's the first family member, and that mountain walk is actually relevant because Island here is playing with two plateaus there on the table, so it is unblockable. Of course, it's only one damage, and that's probably the reason why it'll live. There we see a time walk. Interesting. One floating. There's a balance. This is a really good play by Alan because look at all the lands of Wilfred. He's going to lose all the lands. We're probably going to see some direct damage here directed at Alan. Exactly. We see a bolt. Are we going to see a second bolt? Perhaps. Okay, he's going to lose. Okay, now he's got a discard. He's looking at what to discard. Discarding a Sheevan and a Fireball. He was so close to casting that Sheevan, though. I wonder what the other two cards are in hand. He's also losing a lot of lands. And, of course, the fact that he's losing so many lands is a reason for him to discard the Sheevan. That makes absolute sense. And, you know, Artifacts goes so well with balance, and that's shown here by Aland, you know. I mean, he's not losing any mana sources because his mana sources are mainly the Mox and uh, the Sol Ring. And there we see a Time Twister. Oh, that's kind of nice. That is kind of nice. What I like here is Alan is showing, and he's laughing as well. This is such a nice play. He's showing that he's got bowls. It, it would be quite tempting for Alan to go, you know what, you're low on land. You just had to discard. I'm just not going to play my Time Twister. Uh, but it's like, you know what? I've got a lot of mana open. I've got the whole turn ahead of me. I'm just going to draw a fresh 7. I'm going to give my opponent a fresh 7 as well. And, I mean, look at the amount of lands of Wilfred. That, that balance really set him back. Only two lands, no artifact mana sources so actually it's looking pretty good for Alan. and remember Alan started started this match um, with only five cards in hand so he's gonna draw a fresh seven this must feel so good for Alan. i wonder what he's gonna do there remember he already played a land for turn that's at mishart's factory and he's just gonna pass interesting And now Wilfred can go. So there's a Mistress Factory, three cards, uh, three lands, I should say now. And that's it. We do see a Dragon Whelp there in hand. 
So both players playing surprisingly slow. But sometimes it, that's just the way it goes. You know, if you have a hand full of lands and answers and maybe some bigger creatures, you just have to wait. Three lands is just not enough. There we see a Mox Pearl there by Aland. I wonder if he's got a disenchant for the city and if he wants to disenchant, but he's just passing turn. He's not even attacking. He could, you know, attack and potentially offer a trade. There we see a bolt on end step. An ancestral recall as well. So Alan dropping to 12. And this is kind of dangerous. When your opponent's starting to play direct damage on you, you gotta worry because it probably means he's got a lot more in hand. And also the ancestral recall is gonna give him even more fuel. I'm just really curious to see what he's gonna do. There we see a plateau. Tapping three. Are we going to see a side blast? No, we're going to see a bow lightning. Of course, he's playing three bow lightnings. Are we going to see a bolt on a bow lightning? I think that's a flavor fail, but I do understand this. Very good answer by Alan. Also finding an SS recall here, playing that on end step of Wilfred. Wow. This is really good. There we see a Tundra. Alan going for his hand. Attacking for two here, so he's offering, of, of course he's got no lands anymore to uh, Wilfred to animate his own factory, so he's got to take the two, he's going to drop to 16. Discarding, of course, at City of Brass because he cannot play it because of the city in the bottle. I wonder if Alan, he probably has an answer to the factory if Wilfred chooses to animate. Playing another factory. Gonna tap four. There's probably a dragon whelp. There it is. Really nice to see creatures as bull lightning, goblins of the flark, and dragon whelp here. A quick bolt though in response. Lightning bolts playing a really big part, big uh, big part in this uh, first game. Another animate, another attack. Because again, Wilfred cannot animate it. Doesn't have enough land open. Gotta take the damage. Gonna drop to 14. Playing another land here, a volcanic island and a pass. And there's four, there's another dragon whelp. And oh, there's a mana drain in response. That means four more mana for Aland. So that's four extra mana because of that mana drain. It's always nice to use Mana Drain in combination with the Brain Geyser. He's gonna attack again. Already six damage dealt with that one factory. He's not using the mana from the Mana Drain. Remember, there's no mana burn in Swedish, so he's not gonna take any burn for it. Tapping four again, there's a Suchi. If Alan now has a disenchant, he can swing in for six. Put Wilfred on six, that would be huge. We haven't seen a single disenchant from Alan, by the way. Are we now going to see a disenchant? No, we're going to see an Iron Claw. If he can get rid of the Suchi, that would be huge. But he cannot. He's just passing turn. And Wilfred, you're finding a new card. Can't really see what it is, though. Tapping four. We're going to see... Ooh, another Suchi. And there is an attack with one of the Suchis. Are we going to see a double block? No, we're just going to see a single block. Interesting choice. I wonder why he chose to jump block that Suchi. Could have gone animate Mishra and potentially block both. Attacking here. I mean, okay, he probably has a balance in hand, of course. He played the, the Time Twister. So I wonder if he's going to play that balance now. Or is he just bluffing? Playing a land, yep, there's the balance. So he's just gonna destroy both of the Suchis. And he's got also got four cards in hand, so four cards in hand. So again, it's a pretty good balance here by Island. Um, five lands on the side of Wilfred. We do see, oh, again, the Sheevan goes, that's too bad. Aland has how many lands? Also five lands, those six lands, because he also has that factory. Hopefully they can spot that. 
feel that Alan is missing the Mishra's factory here. Let's just see if both players can spot that. First, Wilfred has to discard. He's going to attack here. Yeah, I believe because I see five lands on the side of Alan. And including with the factory, he's got six lands, so he's forgetting about the factory. So this happens often because factory is also kind of regarded as a creature. Tapping six, there's Sheevan Dragon. Love it. Now let's see if the Sheevan can stick to the board. It's actually quite difficult for Alan to get rid of the Sheevan because he's playing with Lightning Bolt, Chain Lightning, Psionic Blast, but he's not playing with, for example, a Fireball or Disintegrate. He's not playing with uh, Swords to Plowshares. So, I mean, this Sheevan can be the ticket to the victory here for Wilfred. There we see another Mishra's Factory in the pass. Wow, Wilfred's actually going to swing in here with the Mighty Sheevan. He can pump it. He can make it really big. Of course, he wants blockers as well. He's on 10. He's going to he's gonna swing. And I would probably go for 6 here, putting him on 6. Although, he could put him maybe on 3 as well. That would be quite tempting also. But he wants to keep enough lance open. He's going to pump it to 7. He's going to put him on 5. No, he's going to pump to 8. He's going to put him on 4. Does that mean he's got a Psionic Blast in hand? Are we going to see a Psionic Blast here? No, we're going to see a Granite Gargoyle. Wow, for a moment there, I thought, okay, he's going to play a Psionic Blast. So he is leaving a little bit of room open here for Alant to... Well, I mean, he doesn't want to attack, does he? He's on four. He needs to find an answer to the Shiva. No answer to the Shiva Dragon. Couldn't play out the Surrender because of the thing in the bottle. That means game one is won here by Wilfred. And how cool is it to see a Shiva Dragon having such a big, a big influence on a game in, in, in round number five of a huge, big, old-school tournament. I mean, I'm just over the moon by this. I love Sheevan Dragon. Wilfred, well, well done. But this is just game number one. Remember that both players are now going to go in sideboard, into their sideboards, I mean, and, uh, and try to figure out how they want to board against each other. And we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two. Here we go. Both players shuffling up here. So it's one game up for Wilfred after that great Sheevan Dragon victory. And that means Alan gets to a start though. And remember, he had to mold down to just five cards in hand and he had to face it sitting in a bottle as well. So he was a little bit unlucky. Did play two really good balances, by the way. So, I mean, he had some luck as well. He had some luck as well, I guess. But my point is, now he can start hopefully for Alan with just a fresh seven without taking a mulligan. And that obviously gives him a much better starting position than, uh, than he had in game number one. Looks like he's going to keep, and now Wilfred has to choose, does he want to keep this? And he actually, it looks like he actually took a mulligan, and so did Alant. Okay, that's quite interesting. Missed that part, but both players now on six cards in hand, starting with the Savannah lines and a pass turn. And Wilfred here finding a mountain. Is he going to bolt the line? No, he's not going to play Black Lotus. Is he going to crack the Lotus? No, he's going to play a bolt. Must have been, oh, he is going to crack it. Are we going to see, oh, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> so nice. I love this, man. I love this stuff. It's really nice to see that both players are not afraid to kind of play their Time Twisters and the Wheel of Fortunes. That just makes the game a lot more fun. And uh, we do see a Flash Fires, by the way, being discarded by Wilfred, a card from the sideboard. A double Mox here being played and a pass. Let's see what Alan can do with his uh, fresh hand. Of course, drawing into card number eight as well. There we see a plateau and a pass. So no Savannah lines or no mocks and Surrender. Nothing like that. Just a pass. So that's, of course, good news for Wilfred, who's just one game away of getting closer to that top eight result with his deck Meet the Flargies. Playing a Granite Gargoyle 2-2 Flyer. Great flavor text. And for one red, you can give it plus O, plus one. So... Right now, it's still boltable by Aland with only that one red open. Playing a Mishra's Factory and a pass. No Surrendip. I wonder if he boarded those out, by the way. There's a Volcanic Island on the side of Wilfred. Tapping three here. What is he going to do? Ooh, playing a Bull Lightning. And if there's no answer here from Aland, he's in for a lot of pain. But I think we're going to see a Lightning Bolt again on the Bull Lightning. That means only two points of damage 
for Allen's going to drop to 18 and a pass turn. It is kind of ironic that a lightning bolt is one of the best answers to a bull lightning as a threat. I mean, they should have they should have added to the card cannot be targeted by by lightning because it is lightning. But okay, there we see another bolt. So taking care of both of the creatures here of Wilfred. So he's back to square one. There's a fist bump and of course another beer. There we see another draw. Hard to see what card that is. We do see a disintegrate in hand again for Wilfred. Not surprisingly because he's playing three disintegrates and a fireball. Animating. Attacking here. So kind of telling Alan here he's probably got a bolt in hand to deal with the potential factory activation by Alan. So Alan's just taking the damage, gonna drop to 16. Gonna play a land and a pass. And now we see six lands, or six mana I should say, because two of those mana are Moxen. That means that potentially Vilfred can cast a Shiva, and I guess he's not doing that, animating the factory. Now Alan is animating his factory. I'm expecting a bolt here. There we see a lightning bolt. And are we now going to see a disenchant? No, a counter spell. This is actually better than a disenchant. Counter spell on the lightning bolt. Now he can block and pump and kill the Mistress factory. Very well placed counter spell by Alan. And a disintegrate now on the Mistress factory. Because remember, damage stays until the end of the turn. So those two points of damage inflicted by the. Uh, Factory of Wilfred actually stayed on the factory of Alan, so an, a disintegrate of one was enough to kill it. So that's kind of a nice move. There we see a soul ring. And uh, I guess there's some chatting about the soul ring. No idea what, what they're talking about. Alan, maybe you can let us know. Is it a summer edition soul ring? Perhaps I don't think so. But let us let, let me know in the comments what's so special about the soul ring. What are you guys talking about? And just a pass turn here from Vilfred. So it looks like he's kind of uh, ran out of steam here. Cannot find a dragon whelp, for example. That would have been a great play at this point. There we see Suchi by Aland. Can it stick to the board? That's the question. Vilfred also playing with some Shatter's main. Tapping. Are we going to see Shivan here? Shivan Dragon! I love this. Great to see so many Shivans in this matchup. But now, of course, this is a big problem for Aland. We saw it in game one, how difficult it is for him to deal with the Shivan. He couldn't, and he lost. What is he going to do, do now? Perhaps attack with the Suchi. He is attacking, so this is a risk, right? So Wilfred's like, oh no, I don't want you to play a balance again. <laughs> or of course, a lightning bolt or a chain or whatever. So he's choosing not to block. I think that's a good decision. His life total is going to go to 16. Because you may be tempted to block here, but that would mean that the Sheevan gets 4 points of damage, and after the damage is dealt, Alan can play a chain lightning or a lightning bolt or a side blast or a balance to kind of kill the Sheevan. And if you're Wilfred, you really want to keep the Sheevan because you know how difficult it is for Alan to deal with it. So I think this is a really good play here by Wilfred. He's going to attack for 5. The question is, how much is he going to pump it? Of course, depending on what else he's got in hand and may want to play out. He's going to pump it to 9, it seems. That means he's going to drop to 7? Wow, 7! There's a time walk. Oh no, he's going to win this right now, right here on the spot. Alan needs a mana drain. No mana drain. And we see a double victory because of Shivan Dragon. This is just, this is epic, man. This is epic. I always love to see game number three, but in this case, I can live with it because this is a Shivan Dragon walkover. Great. Well done, Wilfred. And uh, you're still in the running to make top eight. So maybe we'll see you deck, your deck later uh, in this uh, same video series. Wow, 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 wow. Shivan Dragon, in case you were doubting, yes, it is a very, very good creature. And that was the episode for today. So um, I hope you liked it. I hope you like Shivan Dragon as much as I do. Um, and if you enjoy watching videos about this tournament, keep an eye on the channel because for the next episode, 
We've got Mono Red Atog Blast. Here you can see the decks, by the way, by David Chrome taking on UW The Witcher. And it's a deck by Edo. And I'm just really looking forward to see this Witcher deck in action. We've got, uh, of course, uh, Witch Hunters. We've got Preacher. We've got... Uh, it's just a super cool deck and very original. So I'm looking forward to see these two decks go head to head in round number six already of the Paladins of the North Cup. Now, before you tune out, I would just like to ask you to do a few things that really help the channel move forward. The first three things are completely free of charge. I would like to ask you to like this video, leave a comment and potentially share it on your socials. All these things are completely free and it really helped the channel move forward. Now, if you're new here to Timmy Talks, first of all, welcome great to have you please consider subscribing and ring that bell okay now that that is out of the way i actually want to talk to you about something very exciting and that is my timmy talks patreon page maybe you're not aware of this but i have a patreon page i already have more than 100 patrons and i'm really thankful for their support but in order for the channel to move forward i would like you to ask i would like to ask you to also consider becoming a patron. The cool thing is if you become a patron and it already starts with just $1 a month, you get access to, to, to Timmy Talks Discord and you can join all of the Timmy Talks online events. So all of that is within your reach. You just need to click on that info card that's probably popped up a few seconds ago and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and there you can just read all about the Timmy Talks Patreon and why it would be a good idea for you to join. So please consider joining, it would be super cool. And another nice perk about um, uh, joining the patron program is that your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? Well, this end scroll. Let's take a look at the fantastic, wunderbar, amazing patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Somebody can see. 